Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Fresh calls have been made for more Caribbean countries to invest in Liat. The government of St. Lucia announces its two island scholars for 2019. Corporate St. Lucia invests in the livelihoods of Grosley residents. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. There are fresh calls for more Caribbean countries to consider investing in the Leeward Islands Air Transport Liat, even as the airline continues to reel from annual losses amounting to millions. This was the consensus reached by Caribbean leaders who attended the just-concluded 30th intersessional meeting of the heads of CARICOM, which was held in St. Kitts over two days. Liat's main shareholder governments are Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The move is to now encourage the governments of St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Grenada and Guyana to come on board and purchase shares within Liat. St. Lucia's position on the issue, however, has been clear. According to the island's tourism minister, it would be irresponsible as a government to invest in Liat in its current state. We hear more from Anissa Antoine. Last October, shareholder governments and their representatives from Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua and Barbuda, and Grenada attended a high-level meeting to discuss the future viability of the regional carrier Liat. A CDB-funded analysis has inspected the regional carrier's performance and concluded that there are weaknesses in the airline's human resource functions, specifically low productivity and performance. Minister for Tourism Dominic Fede stated that St. Lucia will not invest in the airline under its current structure. I think our government position is very, very clear. We believe that um, uh, LIAT or any other regional airline that seeks to bring about the Caribbean islands together uh, or link them together is very critical. But, however, um, that must be done in an environment that is structured, that is efficient, that is profitable. And it should not be a drain on the taxpayers of the Caribbean in favor of any particular island um, that may, for example, have an overstaffing situation. So that is our position. It's very, very clear. We don't intend to invest any money under the current structure of Liat. And I think that that is the position of a number of other Caribbean territories um, who are very cautious about their involvement in Liat financially or from an equitable point of view. CEO of Liat, Julie Reifer Jones, in an interview with Antigua's Observer AM, stated that although she understood the need to sustain the airports, the proportion of the ticket tax is too high to stimulate travel in the region. Although Minister Fede agrees that this may be a contributing factor, he stated that the revenue management in the aviation sector is also a pressing issue. Um, part of St. Lucia's problem that when you look at most of our routes, including that of the Caribbean, uh, you don't have competition on the routes. So you do find that um, airlines are very much in control of what's happening. So if you look at from Miami, it's American Airlines. From, Del from Atlanta, it's Delta Airlines. From New York, it's uh, JetBlue. And it, it keeps going down the line. There's no single gateway where there's competition. And unless we have some competition, it's going to be very difficult um, for customers to see the kind of prices. Since 1974. From the Government Information Service, I am Anissia Antoine reporting. The Government of St. Lucia has announced the two island scholars for the year 2019. The two individuals were the top performers of the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Exam, CAPE, Unit 1 and 2. Education Division's Human Resource Officer of the Human Resource Development Unit, Althea Emanuel, introduced the two awardees. The awardees are Mr. Daniel Carter a graduate of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, and Mr. Shavinsky Joseph, a graduate of Viewford Comprehensive Secondary School, Cape Division. The Island Scholarship Award covers tuition fees, housing, meals, books, ground transportation, insurance fees, and an annual round-trip ticket for the duration of study. Each awardee will receive an amount not exceeding EC $65,000 with a ceiling of $225,000, which is the total value of the scholarship to cover the above expenses. The Human Resource Officer also listed available scholarship opportunities for the year 2019. These include the Taiwan Scholarship 2019 and the New Zealand Commonwealth Scholarship 2019, to name a few. The third recently released scholarship is 
the International Cricket Scholarship for Caribbean Students. Murdoch University, in partnership with Western Australian Cricket Association, is offering international cricket scholarships worth up to 11,000 Australian dollars to eligible West Indian students at the Murdoch University in Australia. Levels of study are bachelor's degrees, graduate diploma and master by coursework degrees and graduate certificate degrees. Deadline for submission of these applications is 4 p.m. Australian time on the 24th of May or 12 a.m. St. Lucian time on the 24th of May. And that was the Human Resource Officer, Alfia Emanuel. The Winwood and Leeward Brewery Limited, the WLBL, has partnered with the Groselay Vendors Association to provide them with customer service and sales training to help improve the overall image of the Groselay Friday Night Street Party. The workshop was hosted by representatives of the brewery where they announced future plans with the community and presented them with vending carts. For me, walking through Grozilly on a Friday night, seeing the vendors with the trees, some of them a little broken down, I think we thought, and I thought, how can we come in as a, as a company and help our customers look good, help them sell more beer? And this is where the idea of this vending cart came about, that we produce, provide every vendor in Grozilly for a vending cart. Um, same one like this, it's, it's new, they could hopefully they maintain it, and they will be able to look better and be a better brand, and, and, and therefore uplift Grozilly Friday night. According to the Peter brand manager, the training was geared at helping customers grow and develop as a brand. The mayor of the Grosley Constituency Council, James Edwin, says the training and card donation by the brewery was a step in the right direction. We've been trying to impress on the vendors. It's not just selling beers. I mean, we, we, we actually are selling a product and it's known internationally. So when people come here, they expect certain standards. Simple things like when they purchase a bear for you to tell them you have no change. I mean, this is unacceptable. So those are the kind of customer service and presentation that we've been trying to inculcate in our vendors. Winwood and Leeward Brewery Limited also announced plans to improve the image of the community through the construction of a children's park near the Groselay Library to be completed in 2019. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline, diesel and kerosene remains unchanged. The prices of the LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders have been changed. The price changes take effect from Monday, March 4, 2019. Gasoline has maintained at $13.95 per gallon. Diesel has also remained at $13.95 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $8.21. The 20-pound cylinder decreased from $32.91 to $32.06 per cylinder. The 22-pound cylinder decreased from $36.48 to $35.54 per cylinder. The 100-pound cylinder decreased from $207.07 to $202.83 per cylinder. The next adjustment of the retail prices for fuel products will be on Monday, March 25, 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to news emanating from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. 
I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says government has embarked on a sustainable socio-economic path for citizens and is in the process of planning towards achieving community participation in activities that lead to real change. The minister made the remarks while addressing the launch of the subregion's first in-depth study on adolescence. In this regard, it is understandable that the data from this research will assist as the building blocks of the basic requirements for planning for making calculated decisions of which adequate and appropriate information or data is paramount. This research recently undertaken is a critical ingredient in understanding the issues which confront our most able and energetic sector of our population. We're talking about our adolescents, our youth. It is a vital first step to make meaningful decisions to confront the fundamental, <coughs> the multidimensional problems which affect our youth. Minister Estefan observed there was considerable mismatch between the skill sets and educational needs of employers and the qualifications of job seekers. Three more matches were played as the 2019 Mass United Insurance 50 over under 19 schools cricket tournament continued at the Grosile playing field. St. Mary's College completed a comfortable six-wicket victory over Vidbutai secondary. Vidbutai batting first in a game reduced to 40 overs aside was dismissed 446 in 34.4 overs, with Merkel St. Rose top scoring with 37. Sherman St. Arge making 18, Noah Imanas 14, and Elroy Griffith 10. The wicket takers for St. Mary's College were Amari Venner with 3 for 43, Akim Ogis 2 wickets for 2 runs, Mardin Rene 2 for 10, and Jovel Dupre 2 for 20. Chasing 147 for victory, St. Mary's College led by a half century from West Indies under 15 player Akim Ogis easily got to the target, finishing on 150 for 4. Ogis finished on a delightful 57 not out, which included 9 fours and 1 six, and Jihan Buddha, a well composed 44 not out. At the Philip Marsley ground in VFO, Super Comprehensive Secondary had the better of Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary, winning that encounter by 71 runs. Super Comprehensive batting first made 171 all out in 35.1 overs, with Anil Fauché top scoring with a well played 60. Stefan Teofin, 39, and Kevin Gassi, 18. Bowling for Beanfield Comprehensive, Urias Constantine, by 4 for 30, and Kaj Roberts, 3 for 43. In reply, Beanfield Comprehensive could only muster 121.2 overs, with Joby Wells remaining on 23 not out, and Amani Agduma making 23. Nick Jabatis was Super Comprehensive's leading bowler, with impressive figures of 6 for 18, he was supported by Richie William with 2 for 12. At the Balata playing field, Sir Ida Simmons secondary enjoyed a good 8 wicket victory over Cicero secondary. Cicero batting first, dismissed for 90, with Kiwin John making 17 and Noel Leo 10. Bowling for Sir Ira Simmons, Lindell Wee back 5 for 17 and Shahid Closel had 3 wickets. In reply, Sir Ira Simmons knocked off the runs for the loss of just 2 wickets, with Kimani Buske making 41. Gabriel Bissett, 35, and Kerry Victor, 31. The Paul Vol Clinic held at the George Odom Stadium in VF4 for secondary school boys and girls recently marked the first step in a two-year plan to formally establish the unique event as an official school sports championship. The objectives of the first clinic were to guide and instruct athletes who are new to the sport over their first crossbars, thereby creating a self-identity and connection with the event to provide a safe and fun initial experience in the event and to introduce them to drills and areas of strength building that would help them in subsequent sessions throughout the year. Coach Andy Bell said the clinic was a success in that it was a first step in a two-year process and had surpassed any similar events in the last few decades. He said students with great attitudes and optimism were introduced to the sport and showed the potential to be successful vaulters for their schools and beyond. He added that with the first step taken, adjustments in logistics will be made 
to ensure even greater participation and success at the next clinic. And that's where we come to the end of our update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia National Youth Council, in collaboration with Volunteer St. Lucia, will be working towards the implementation of a national campaign for Good Deeds Day. Good Deeds Day is a global day that unites people from 100 countries, encouraging them to do good deeds for the benefit of others and the planet. It will be celebrating worldwide on the 7th of April, 2019. We're looking to promote thinking good, speaking good, and doing good. And we'll be undertaking this campaign with um, a holistic approach. So we'll be doing good for the environment through cleanup campaigns. We'll be doing good for our senior citizens. Through pampering, we'll be doing good for our community, through beautification, as well as our people for development. So we're looking forward to everybody coming on board with us and participating. Good Deeds Day was initiated in 2007 and continues to gain momentum. The initiative held its largest day yet on April 15, 2018. 3,500,000 participants from 100 countries took part in Good Deeds Day, totaling over 7 million hours of service. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquéon. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations. Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquéon. Monsieur Tan Nisha, Monsieur Madame, le département qui est responsable de pour information gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS. À ce moment-là, télévision nationale pays à NTN Capacito Nouvelle Aquéon. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci j'ai annoncé ces deux étudiants pour 2019 que tu veux assister ce gouvernement pour faire étude à l'université de l'autre pays. C'est des individus là pour former plus haut que toutes les autres des examinations qui plus avancées en Caraïbes là pour déterminer les capacités des étudiants généralement. Officier pour le développement des ressources du PEP en division de l'éducation, Arthur Emmanuel, qui a annoncé ces deux individus là qui trouvaient grand assistance à là pour l'année ici. Emmanuel déclarait que M. Daniel Cotter, qui était un étudiant en collège Arthur Lewis, et M. Chevinsky Joseph, qui était un étudiant dans l'école secondaire vieux fort, fait succès à dégoué pour recevoir grand assistance à là. Des étudiants à là, qui ont trouvé assistance en hauteur de 65 000 dollars pour couvrir toutes les dépenses. En parmi ces dépenses là, c'est pour étude, pour qu'ils puissent habiter, manger, livres, transportation, Assurance et voyage tous les années pour visiter pour vacances et vivre l'école. C'est pour tout le monde qui à l'école. là. Ces étudiants qui ont suivi étonnement valaient l'argent en total de 225 000 dollars pour couvrir toutes les dépenses. Officier à département d'éducation a annoncé l'autre location des assistances qui avaient là-bas, hors de l'autre pays, comme Taïwan et New Zealand, à parmi les autres. Troisième à ces assistances scholarship, ça là, c'est un des cricket international pour les étudiants en Haute Caribla, l'université Modoc, un gymnase et puis association cricket australien qui a offert assistance pour faire étude des affaires cricket international. En hauteur de 11 000 dollars australiens pour les, pour les étudiants en Haute Caribla pour suivre étude à l'université Modoc en degré de leur bachelor's, diplôme, master's et certificat. C'est l'officier Emmanuel. Dernier jour que vous pouvez application à tuer, c'est à 4 heures après-midi, là c'est l'heure australien, le 24 mai, là c'est midi, en l'heure nous, à cette ci le 24 mai. 
plusieurs moun ki ka souffre pi malade zo wey né ek gorge trouvé bon assistance semaine passée à l'hôpital Victoria ex Saint Jude au dio gain docteur sorti pays Canada ce docteur sala portue portue service à façon de traitement pour docteur pays pa dan yo aussi té performer l'opération à ce moun ki ka souffre pi ces maladies là selon docteur Marc Samaha qui te ka conduit groupe là c'est un grand bénéfice pour cette ici trouver qualité service ce médecin ça là docteur Samaha ka kwè ki a pa di assistance ça là donc a pa même te apprendre et présenter échange d'informations et expérience et aussi ajouter ki service là pour tuer yo l'occasion pour apprendre en quelle façon système médical pays a ka opoué ministre de responsabilité pour santé on a Maria Isa comme marqué ki il même te très plein et très remerciable pour service ce docteur Sala qui a porté autant bénéfice pour cette ci. Mais Isaac parlait des différents monde qui a souffert et puis maladie à à Fijayo, il parlait des gens monsieur qui était souffert sévèrement par accident courant et déjà qu'a trouvé une grande quantité d'assistance et puis l'opération en pays Colombie. Alors cette assistance hot ce docteur Canada, c'est un service qui valait très haut tout bonnement. C'est assistance Sala. Selon ministre Isaac, ça a porté très bien bénéfice, bénéfice pour ces patients-là. Ça a gardé trop plus mais à présent. On a Isaac fait référence pour docteur Sixtus Gabriel, qui est responsable pour faire opération pour les oreilles et gorge. Ministre Isaac a expérience à aidé pour apprendre plus et pour faire échange d'expérience. C'est ici, et puis ce docteur à Canada. Ministre de responsabilité pour égalité et justice sociale, honorable Alain Admontout, Jabay Assurance Liki, gouvernement Jacques Amete en onge en place pour adresser sérieusement la situation concernant la jeunesse qui a souffert et puis abusement sexuel, physique et d'autres façons. Monsieur Montout fait annoncement ça là récemment devant une grande conférence pour te présenter un rapport de l'organisation UNESCO pour montrer divers problèmes qui ont menacé la jeunesse principalement. Les yoka sorti en l'âge des enfants pour être manger. Selon le ministre Moutout, il faut j'en en place pour adresser ces situations. Ça là, et éduquer pas seulement pour jeunesse, mais aussi pour les parents et les pays. Pas jeunesse seulement, mais les parents avec la société pour faire assurer nous tiennent euh, pour que ça la avec pour nous pas euh, aller derrière en ce avancement ça nous a fait. Quand, à Wapoa, bah nous avons des informations. Ce n'est pas toute information qui est positive, mais nous nous plaît pour recevoir des informations avec ce qui dit nous, nous allons en, en bonne direction. Dernièrement, qui qualité conseil pour les jeunes, particulièrement ce qui est en euh, éducation au pays Eh bien, je dis jeunes pour faire assurer et éduquer les parce que pour eux, ça vivre en bonne la vie, ni pour ça ni en éducation, pour ça, ni en bon travail. Avec, pour faire une contribution pour le développement du pays, c'est aussi pour euh, être un écoyeur avec mes éducation. Si vous n'êtes pas qui était aussi présent dans ce moment-là, qui était pour le coup en département de GIS, Mme Velde Joseph, déclaré qu'il était là pour apporter un peu d'assistance pour la situation pour les adolescents, parce qu'il a montré des gros problèmes qui affectent eux, à quelle façon et à quelle manière pour s'adresser à faire ça. Là. Ça est important parce que ça a aidé nous pour garder qui qualité de uh, projet nous a mis en place pour adresser ces qualités de bagages à nos carrières. Pour ça, ça est important aussi parce que si vous ne savez pas bien savent qui ça qui a fait, ou pas ça uh, développer un programme pour adresser um, ces problèmes-là. Donc, so, uh, uh, Kachil Zala, nous comprenons que nous avons assez d'informations à présent pour faire un bon programme, pour faire un programme qui a match et bien, qui a um, adressé ça nous a Et puis ça est important. La journée, il y a un autre appel encore pour ces pays qui ont placé plus de l'intérêt en façon d'investissement en avion liat, malgré avion qui a perdu millions de dollars par l'année. Mais ce chef gouvernement de l'organisation CARICOM, qui peut dire ceci, il y a une troisième grande conférence à St. Kitts, récemment, qui était dit pour deux jours. Appel à la fait pour encourager 
ces pays qui ont 5 kits avec Nevis, c'est aussi la Grenade et Guyana pour faire investissement en opération à Violiat. Mais si le ministre pour faire tourisme, honorable Dominique Fede, ça n'a pas une possibilité qui a à l'intérieur du gouvernement, c'est aussi la situation qui est l'État à Violiat présentement. Pendant déjà longtemps, c'est le représentatif du gouvernement qui n'est l'intérêt à avion ça là, comme Barbade, Sévesan, Antigue, Barbieda et la Grenade, de tenir une grande discussion pour examiner la capacité de l'IAT. Il y a eu un hotback développement qui a montré que l'IAT est très faible en performance et que la production est trop bas. Le ministre Fédé a remarqué que c'est aussi par Kai entré en situation ça là pour aider l'IAT à porter Chaïlou ça là. Fédé a déclaré que malgré l'important en opération avion l'IAT, pour renforcer les relations des pays caribes là. C'est faux, l'année, euh, comprendre aussi qui ça n'est pour faire à d'ailleurs façon qui a porté au fil. Il y en a ces gros problèmes là, c'est taxes à soutenir, mais aussi, M. Fédé, car oui, problème de ménagement, il servait pour exemple problème de compétition qui n'a pas existé à Caribes là. Parce que, comme c'est l'autre avion en Amérique là, comme American Airlines, JetBlue et Delta, la panique, qualité compétition ça là qui ça travaille en faveur moun qui ka voyager at pays caribes là liat ka porter service pour 17 destinations en caribes là depuis 1974 et madame ça c'est côté nous entrer en bout uh, nouvelle nous pour aujourd'hui moi ka remercier autant pour côté mon ka bon invitation pour chaque puis moi encore nous avons présenter une autre nouvelle à créole à présent nous ka vie et puis nécha Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening with us weather-wise. An Atlantic high-pressure system will maintain a brisk easterly wind flow and rough seas around the eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Patches of low-level clouds will drift with this wind flow and will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 2.41 p.m. and will be low at 9.11 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay high at 3.48 p.m. and will be low at 10.38 p.m. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves and swells 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.18 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.